Hey, hello friends and welcome to Retro Portal Studio and in this video we're going to be taking a look at creating this awesome animated floating action button menu in Flutter. You can see that when we click on the button, menu pops out in a nice animated way and then pops back in when we click on the button again with a very fluid animation. This is going to be interesting, so let's get started. Okay, so right now I'm in a simple Flutter app in which I just have this my home page, which is a stateful widget and it contains a scaffold which further contains a container which is given some width and height and that is equal to the width and height of the screen. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to add a child which is a stack because in this case we don't need to add a floating action button directly to the scaffold. We will make our own button and we'll add that to the stack at a particular position. So to do this what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new stateless widget which is the circular button. So I'll create a new stateless widget and name this circular button. In the circular button, we need to have a few properties such as width, height, color, icon, and on click. And on click is basically the function that we need to pass to the circular button, which will trigger whenever the button is clicked. To give values to all these properties, we need to have a constructor. In the build function of the circular button class, we have a container. So what I need to do is I need to make this button circular. For that, I'll add decoration. And this will take a box decoration. And in this box decoration, I'll pass in a color which will be the same color as that of the property. Other than the color, I'll add a shape. And this is going to be box shape dot circle. Other than this, we need to also pass in the width that is going to be equal to the width and height that is going to be equal to the height. And also we need to pass a child, which is going to be an icon button. For the on pressed, I'll just pass on click function that we have passed right here. And for the icon, I'll pass the icon and I'll also pass enable feedback and set it to true. And by simply doing this, we have this circular button class ready. The next thing that we need to do is we need to use this class in our stack. So in the stack, I'll add the children property. And in here, I'll use positioned. And positioned will further require a stack as a child. The reason for using stack as a child of positioned is because when the menu is closed, all the buttons are stacked behind this button. And for that, we have to use the stack. So in this stack, the first child that I'm going to add is this circular button that we just created down here. I'll pass in the color property that is going to be colors.red and I'll give it a width and a height of 60 and I'll also give it an icon of menu. For the onclick function, I'll just pass an empty function for now. And other than this, I also need to specify the bottom right position, which is going to be like this. I'm keeping a distance of 30 from the right and a 30 from the bottom. And if I save the app and go to the emulator, you can see that we have a custom button in the bottom right corner of the app. The next thing that we need to do is we need to create some more buttons like this circular button. At this point, what I'll do is I'll just copy the circular button and create three more copies for it. And I'll change the properties of all these buttons. I'll make the color of one button blue and give it a width and height of 50. And I'll change the icon to add. I'll come to the second button and change its color to black and also give it a width and height of 50 and change its icon to camera. Now for the third button, I'll change the color to orange accent and also give it a width and height of 50 and change the icon to person. Right now, if I save the app and go to the emulator, you won't see any of these buttons because they're stacked behind this main button. And if I remove this button from here and save the app and go to the emulator, you can see that we see this orange accent button and the other two buttons are stacked behind this button. So I'll just paste back in the main button. The next thing that we need to do is we need to move these buttons at a particular angle and the angles look something like this. On the x-axis, on the right-hand side, we have the zero degree. And as we move clockwise, we move to 90, 180, 225, and 270. So from the three buttons, one button needs to be at 180 degree, and the second needs to be at 225, and the third needs to be at 270. And for moving or translating these widgets, we need to use the transform widget. So coming back to the app, we'll start this from this orange accent button. And what I will do is I'll wrap this into a transform widget. And we're not going to use the default transform. Instead, we're going to use transform.translate. And this translate requires an offset. And for the offset, I'm going to pass offset.fromDirection. And this fromDirection functions requires a direction, which is going to be given in radians, and a distance to which the child needs to be moved in that direction. So if I use this function, the first problem is going to be that we have to convert degrees to radians. And because we need to use the same thing again and again, what I will do is I'll come up here and create a new function which looks something like this. By simple Google search, you can know that a unit radian or one radian is equal to this many degrees. So in this function, we're simply dividing the number of degrees by the unit radian 
and hence will convert the degrees to radians. And here in offset.from direction, in place of direction what I'll do, I'll pass get radians from degree and this button needs to be at 180 degrees. And also I'll pass a sample distance and I'll keep it 100 for now. And if I save the app and go to the emulator, you can see that the orange button moves outside the main button at a degree of 180 degrees and at a distance of 100. So we'll do the same thing with the other two buttons. And at this point, I have added transform to all the three buttons that we need to move outside of the main button. And if I save the app right now and go to the emulator, you can see that we have the orange button at 180 degrees, the black button at the 225 degrees and the blue button at 270 degrees. And all three buttons are at a distance of 100 from the main button. And now what we need to do is we need to animate the movement of these buttons. For that, I'll go up in the state and create an animation controller. And along with this animation controller, I'll also create an animation called degree one translation animation. What I need to do now is I need to override the init state function. And in here, I need to initialize the animation controller. And I'll put the animation controller equal to animation controller. And this will require a vsync. And for the vsync, we need to provide a mixin to my homepage state, which can be done like this. And the mixin is going to be single ticker provider mixin. And now we can pass a value of this to the vsync. And we're also going to add a duration that is going to be of duration in milliseconds of 250. The next thing that we need to do is we need to initialize the degree one translation animation. And for that, I'll put the degree one translation animation equal to tween. And the value of tween is going to be tricky. In this case, I'll just pass in a beginning of 0, 0.0 and I'll end this at 1.0. And after this, I'll use the animate function of tween and pass in the animation controller. And this will return us with the animation object. So just to test the animations, what I'll do is I'll use the animation controller and I'll use the add listener function. And in here, I'll call an empty set state so that whenever the value of animation controller changes, we simply notify the state. And if you don't know much about animation controller and how animation works in Flutter, you can check out my animation video from the link in the description below. What I'll do next is I'll come to this on click function and in here, I'll write a simple if else statement. Basically, what we're doing is we're checking that if the animation is complete, then we're going to reverse the animation or else we're going to start the animation using the forward function. And the next thing that we need to do is we need to use the value of animation instead of this constant 100 here. And for that, I'll use degree one translation animation dot value and multiply this by 100 because in the tween, we're setting the tween from 0.0, .0 to 1.0. And for the translation, we need to translate the value from 0 to 100. So we're multiplying the value by 100 right here. The reason for using 0.0, .0 and 1.0 in tween is because we can use the same tween for scale also. So right now, what I'll do is I'll use the same value for the other two translations. And if I save the app right now and go to the emulator, you can see when I click on the button, all the three buttons move outside the main button. And if I click on this button again, all the three buttons move inside the main button. The animation kind of looks dull right now. So what we need to do is we also need to change the scale and the rotation of the buttons. So we'll look at the rotation first. And for the rotation, what I need to do is I need to go up here and create a new animation called rotation animation. And for initializing the rotation animation, I'll come down here and put the rotation animation equal to tween that will start from 180 degrees and end at 0, 0.0. And I'll animate this tween using the animate function. And for this, we also need to change the curve of the animation. So we'll use curved animation. And for the parent, I'll pass the animation controller and I'll move this to the next line. And for the curve, I'll pass curves dot ease out and I'll put the semicolon in the end. For using this rotation animation, what I'll do is I'll come down here to one of the circular buttons and I'll wrap this button with a transform widget. And in this transform, I'll pass in the transform property. And for the value of this transform, I'm going to use matrix four dot rotation Z. And for the rotation, we also need to pass the value in radians. So what I'll do is I'll use the same function that is get radians from degree. And here I'll pass the value of rotation animation. That is rotation animation dot value. And at this point, what I'll do is I'll close the app and run the app again. You can see that this returns us with a value that int is not a subtype of double. And this is because in the tween, we have passed the value as 180. And instead, we need to pass it as 180.0. And it's also a good practice to cast the tween to the type. And at this point, you can see that the button is placed out outside the main button. And if you click on the button, it rotates in a weird way. And this is because when we're passing the rotation transform, 
we also need to pass in the alignment. And in this case, the alignment needs to be alignment.center. And if I save the app and run the app again, you can see that the buttons pop out in a regular way. And now we need to pass the same behavior to all the other two buttons. Once this is done and we save the app, we can go back to the emulator and we can see that when we click on the button, the buttons rotate and they come outside of the main button. And what we can also do is we can come down to the main button and also wrap this in a transform. And we'll pass in the same transform and alignment to this also. And now if I save the app, you can see that when we click on the button, the main button also rotates as the other buttons move outside the main button. And it rotates again when we close the menu. The next thing that we need to do is we also need to change the scale of these buttons as they move out. And for that, we can use the same transform property with the help of which we're giving the rotation. So what I'll do is I'll come at the end of this matrix transform and extend this with the scale property. For the value of scale, what I'll do is I'll pass in the degree one translation animation dot value because the value of this translation goes from 0.0, .0 to 1.0. And if I save the app and go to the emulator, you can see that this button scales down as it moves inside the button and scales up as it moves outside the main button. So we're going to use the same property with the other two buttons. At this point, the animation in our app looks fine, but it's dull in comparison to the animation that we want to create. And if you observe the animation closely, you can see that all the three buttons have separate animations going on for them. So the first button pops out fast, the second button pops out slow, and the third button pops out last. And also the size of the last button increases extensively as it moves out in comparison to the other two buttons. And this gives us with a fluid animation that we want to create in our app. So let's get back to the code and make the animation more fluid. So basically we need to have a separate animation for all the three buttons. So we're going to create two more animations and name them degree two translation animation and degree three translation animation. And also we need to change this tween because in this tween we're moving from 0.0, .0 to 1.0. But to make this animation more fluid, what we need to do is we need to use multiple tweens. And in that, we need to move from 0.0, .0 to 1.2, and then from 1.2 back to 1.0. So for using multiple tweens, we need to use something called tween sequence. And the tween sequence basically requires a list of tween sequence items. So for the first item in this tween sequence, I'll pass in a tween sequence item of type double. And in here, I'll pass a simple tween that'll go from 0.0, .0 to 1.2. And in this, I've given a weight of 75. So basically, weight is the percentage of the animation that this tween will take. So the next thing that I'll do is I'll add another tween sequence item. And in this, the tween will move from 1.2 back to 1.0. And the weight of this animation is going to be 25. So basically, 75% of the animation is going to be moving from 0.0, .0 to 1.2. And the rest, 25%, is going to be moving from 1.2 to 1.0. And I need to use the same thing for the other two animations, but with a little bit of tweaking. So what I'll do is I'll just copy this animation and create two duplicates. And I'll name the second animation as degree two translation animation and the third animation as degree three translation animation. And because all the three buttons need to move differently, what I'll do is I'll come to the degree two translation animation. And for the first tween, I'll change the value from 1.2 to 1.4 and change the weight to 55. And I also need to change the value here. And for this, I'll put in the weight of 45. Doing the same thing for the third animation, what I'll do is I'll pass in the value of 1.75 instead of 1.2, and I'll change the value here also. And I'll change the weights to 35 and 65 respectively. One thing that you have to keep in mind that the total of the weights needs to be 100. So in the first animation, the first twin will take 75% of the animation, and the rest will be taken by the second tween, and the same goes for the second and third animation. And one thing that I've also noticed is that you can't really pass curved animation to this animate function when you're using the tween sequence. So the next thing that I need to do is I need to come down here, and in place of degree one translation animation, I need to pass in degree two translation animation, and I'll copy the same thing for the scale also. And I'll come down here to the third button, and in here I'll pass in degree three translation animation, and copy this value and pass the same for the scale. And at this point, you can see that all the three buttons move out in a nice and fluid way and they go inside in the same way. So you can see that just by using some cool animation tricks, we can create this awesome animation in Flutter. So I hope you find this video useful. And if you do, please hit the like and subscribe button and consider supporting me on Patreon for more Flutter videos coming your way on Retro Portal Studio. See you next time.
Peace.